Uh, thank you so much for the claps. Uh, journey through CSS Grid. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, this clicker is not working. <laughs> What is happening? You have to clear okay. on present again. On on the on the. Uh, uh, if you turn it around. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Left and right. Oh. Uh. Yeah. So today we are going to be talking about memes or uh, CSS grids. Uh, don't worry, you are not being scammed. Uh, grids. So how many of you are familiar with uh, CSS grids? Raise your hands. How many of you are using CSS for the first time or have heard about CSS for the first time? Raise your hands. OK, so I am the only amateur one here. So uh, what, uh, what are grids? Uh, while working on my personal site, uh, I came across this thing, uh, not a thing actually, this problem of uh, you know, creating a grid-like layout. So uh, this is not actually going to be a professional kind of talk. So what I'll be doing is just share my experience through how I discovered the perfect uh, grid solution to all the uh, CSS layouts. So <laughs> What, do you press the escape button or something? <laughs> I have no idea. Let me just check. Yeah. So when we thought about grids, uh, the first thing that came to our mind is tables. Tables is like the really basic solution to grids, grid-like layouts. I mean, wow. You just created the table tag, table data, insert the header, insert the table row, table data, and that's that. But you know, table is not the best solution when you approach grids, because what happens is table is really restrictive when it comes to responsiveness. When you change the grids, uh, the tables is like the comic sense, if you are familiar with memes. I mean, that is a really bad joke. <laughs> yeah, so frameworks. So framework, what framework does is, is it's, uh, it provides a you know uh, built-in uh, built, not built-in uh, a ready-made uh, co code so that you can just put in your contents and then work on the grid-like uh, layout. So the f most familiar framework that we might all, all have heard about is Bootstrap, but uh, Bootstrap I found it really complex when it comes to grids. So this is the site where uh, I was working on. This is actually my personal site. I know the name is really long, but uh, blame Coldplay. I will just show you the reason why. So this is actually the song that Coldplay came out with while I was working on my site. So I just uh, named this song name as my website name. So, <laughs> so this is my site. Uh, and. While I was working on this page, on my portfolio page, uh, the internet is really great. Thank you for that. Oh, what is happening? So if you are wondering what is this, uh, this is actually my uh, logo mark for what is happening. <laughs> the image is not loading. Let me check. OK. So yeah, uh, if the images for, uh, image was loaded, I think the grid layout would be working perfectly fine. Let me check. Huh. I think we should. Please give us a moment. I'll just tether my phone for. <coughs> Thanks for helping. Hey, uh, <laughs> it'll come nag me. <laughs> it's okay. 
Uh, GA is it? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh. Let's hope this works. Or, or you, you can use the fingers. Uh, you didn't try GA uh, the uh, Wi Fi? GA is it? Yes, correct. Okay, let's try that. Uh, oh, caps lock is on. Uh, uh, GA. Pass is yellow pencil, it's above you. Yellow pencil. Yes, yellow pencil. Look. Yeah, just. Let's try it. Oh, okay. I hope it works. Uh -huh. Please clear your cache. More time lag hai yaar. Karo. Kaise karo? Private window karna. Oh okay. Yes. Files hai na. Kya hai? Shad, uh, Singapore may available in Shad. Yeah. Oh. Oops. Mm. Want to try this one then? But this also in... I mean, I guess it's okay. <laughs> it's too much damage work. Okay. But you have the uh, image stored locally somewhere? No. No. I think it's okay, yeah. Okay? Yeah. Cool. Looks like cash. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I think there is some caching issue with the browser or something. I swear I have coded this website as it should be. Uh, I'm not really an amateur. So yeah, so this is the site I was working on while I was, uh, uh, you know, working as a freelancer. So what happened was I was really inspired by the uh, portfolio layouts. So what it does is, if you click on branding, it will it would show all the branding related projects, animation. It would show the all, all the animation related projects. But the secret to this grid layout is something that I will share later on this uh, presentation. Let me just carry on. Uh, okay, so flex grids. Uh, how many of you uh, you know thought about using flex boxes when it comes to grids? Nope. Okay. Uh, so, flex box flex boxes are really uh, you know uh, accessible example of uh, achieving a grid like layout, but it is really scary. So that is an exaggeration, but it can be really confusing at times. Let me show you why. Uh, this. This is actually a grid layout from already existing uh, CSS framework that I will share uh, later in the talk. So what it does is uh, it creates a grid row uh, with the display format as flex and the flex direction as row. So what it does is uh, it creates a grid layout in the row format and also it defines the width of that uh, flex container. And also uh, for defining the grid column, we use this. So what this uh, flex property does is the first value defines the flex growth. The second value defines the flex shrink. The third value defines the flex basis. So I'll just explain what each of them means. Flex growth means, uh, let's say you have this uh, first row. You just highlight, yeah. So this is the first row. If we define this, uh, define the flex shrink as zero. You will see that uh, the thing is working. Let me check. Uh, yeah. So what it does basically is uh, it uh, attempts to you know uh, grow the flex width relative to all the other flex items uh, present in the, in this container. Uh, the second flex value, what it does is it tries to you know shrink 
the flex container items width relative to other flex items in that container and the third one auto is called the flex basis so if you set a specified value it will just set it as a fixed value for other widths in the container so the default value is auto let's switch to that so yeah that is how the flex container works but it can be really scary at times and also confusing because uh, yeah so what it does is uh, you can e there are only two cases that are discovered either the flex uh, items can be row wise or column wise like this so it can be either this or this this or this by defining a media query uh, here so if it if the resolution of the device is below 768 pixels it just switches to the column wise layout but uh, i found this really you know unpractical uh, in case you want to still you know have a have an easy access to the flex like layouts you can go to uh, let me just share the link <laughs> flexboxread.com so this is the uh, site which uh, provides the framework for flex grids that i just talked about now uh, it is an open source project so you can uh, fork it or uh, work on it as you like so the next slide let me so yeah uh, I really uh, inspired inspire by getting inspired by the already existing frameworks. I tried to create my own framework, not copy. So why is this not working again? <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying so hard to be funny. Let me check. Yeah, so uh, I tried to create this framework of mine uh, in CodePen so that it can be accessible to everyone. Let me just, yeah. It is called Project Blisswave. You can just go to codepen.io slash sudipto and access this uh, framework. So, uh, yeah, uh, there was this already existing framework called Milligram, which uses the flex grid layout. If you just scroll down here. Yeah, uh, this is the grid layout that Milligram uses. So it is uh, really a stripped down version of uh, Bootstrap. You can just use Flex and uh, easily, you know, define grid layouts here. So what, uh, the advantage of using Flex is it, uh, you know, automatically calculates the uh, width of each item on the grid so that you don't have to specifically define the percentage of each menu item here. The disadvantage is, uh, as I spoke before, you can only get this row-wise direction or uh, you know, column-wise direction. Uh, yeah. So, inspired, getting inspired by this, I created this framework. But uh, I found that this is a really bad drawback for my site layout. So, what I did was. I searched for uh, for some grid generators on Google. So this was the best one I, that I found by Graham Miller. Uh, so why this responsive grid layout? Let me just show you the demo. So to just try this layout, I created this fake movie site uh, what it does is uh, uh, you know present the movie posters in a grid like format and as we resize it it changes the layout uh, in a really fluid manner so if we go below let's say 800 pixels it switches to four uh, columns if you go below 600 pixels it switches to three columns 
If you go low 400 pixels, it doesn't do anything. Uh, not sure why. So yeah. So yeah, uh, the secret behind this layout is uh, if you go to responsivegridgenerator.com. So this is the site if you want to note it down. So yeah, what he does is uh, he creates four divs with some fixed uh, percentage values, like uh, span three or four. This defines the uh, you know specific width of uh, the grid items, like seventy-four point six. Or uh, if we want to show one item in grid of four, so we can set it as 23.8. So that is how this grid actually works. What it does is, let me just show you an example, code pen dot example. Create a new pen. I'll just reset the CSS so that there is no padding or something like that. Uh, div. So we can create four columns like this. We can name it content one, two, so that we can identify the columns. Oh, what is happening? Oh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, we can add the column wrapper as display block. And this content here is the column. We can define the width as 24%, 25% because there are only four columns. We can define the float element as left so that they fit each other. Apparently, they are not. Let me just check. These are all over the place. Let me just check. So, yeah, uh, what this is doing is uh, creating a grid of four elements and then creating this hidden uh, horizontal line which I have hidden using this CSS value called uh, visibility hidden so that it can clear the float that I have created here float left so using this simple logic uh, this grid uh, system works really great so that it can uh, you know where did it go? Let me check. Yeah, so that it can uh, it can switch the grid layout dynamically as you change the screen size. So there is the five columns, four columns, and three is the maximum number of columns. Yeah. So that was all about uh, responsivegridsystem.com and. If you want more, you can have 
you can note this uh, CSS grid generators, uh, grid calculator or DK, which is the first result that comes up on Google. But I don't really find it as helpful as the responsive grid generator because, I mean, look at this. The UX is really all over the place, so you can't really understand what's happening here. The next thing is simplegrid.io. Uh, this is not an actual CSS framework. This is only a grid framework for the CSS grids. Uh, this uses this actually uses the Flexbox system that I explain, talked about earlier. Uh, the last one is CodePen.io. So uh, let me just. So this is the site where you can get uh, open source codes to play around, uh, play around, and you know create your own uh, CSS layouts or grids that you want. So let's say if you want to search some uh, grid layouts, you can just search for grid layouts code pen, and you will get open source li links to already created grid layouts here. You can just click on any one of them and yeah, you can click on any one of them and just add a play around this open source code that you get here. So yeah, open source uh, codepen.io is really a great resource to start with. Uh, let me just see. So you might be wondering uh, what is this 14-year-old uh, kid doing presenting you know about css grid i'm actually a happiness year uh, engineer at automatics uh, the creator of wordpress.com and also i am a memes enthusiast if that matters and also i am i have a email and twitter handle to contact and i am actually 24 uh, <laughs> and are you single i might be Uh, so do you have any questions or uh, suggestions or meme resources that you want to share? Sure, Nils. What are, what are memes? <laughs> <laughs> it's from the 80s. <laughs> I, I, you know, the thing is, I, I, I did not grow up with tables. I grew up with frame sets. So this is okay. like really old. <laughs> if you go to google.com, have you heard about it? Yeah. <laughs> So if you go to google.com and search for memes, you will get the actual definition of memes on the right hand side corner. Yeah. Yeah, so. I'm sorry? Yeah, uh, we are actually the uh, you know, owner of wordpress.com that is based on wordpress.org. That is an open source uh, software. No, 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 I'm here asking you. Oh, no, no, no. So, uh, <laughs> so what, uh, let me just show you. If you go to my weirdly long website, you will find that uh, the home page and other pages that you actually see here are built on PHP and HTML and core JavaScripts. But actually, this uh, journal section that is actually a blog is based on WordPress.com. So what I did was uh, I used a blank theme that already contains a functions.php file, header.php file, and also a footer.php file. So it already includes all the PHP files that I needed, right? So I just uh, can incorporate my own CSS file and create the blog, which I haven't posted anything. <laughs> yeah, so that's that. Do you have any questions? Anything? Yeah, sure. Uh, I believe Internet Explorer does not support CSS grids, right? So is there any fallback option for that? Uh, the thing is, uh, we CSS developers really don't consider in Internet Explorer right now. <laughs> so I know that, is, that can be mean, but uh, what we do is uh, we have prefixes like MS for Internet Explorer 10 and above, or 11 and above, I'm not sure. So you can use those prefixes, uh, like MS Flexbox or uh, something like that. You can use those prefixes to support the specific browsers. What about CSS grid? Can you use the prefixes for CSS grids? Uh, 
the, you don't have any uh, you know prefixes for CSS grids. You can just use uh, widths, floats, and clear the floats around. So yeah, yeah. so still use those, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Internet Explorer does support that. Right? Yeah. 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 So for flex boxes, the the Safari browsers disclaimer. The Safari browsers are really wonky with flex boxes. So if you want to use the flex boxes, I really don't recommend it. Uh, if your major focus is Safari. So yeah, that's that. Uh, any other questions? Nope. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs>